Welcome to General Structures 2 and Lateral Forces, lesson number 5, example number 2. And what is it asking? It is asking, what is the static horizontal and vertical wind pressure in pounds per square foot on a flat roof fire station, which is 15 foot high and located in the downtown area of Los Angeles using method 1? All right, so what do we know? First of all, it says we have a flat roof fire station. Let's just go ahead and draw it. There's a little door so the fire engines can come out. And here's the 15 foot tall the flat roof, 15 foot. And it's a fire station. So it's a fire station. What, that should key something up for you, saying, hey, this is an important structure and will probably be a higher importance value. And another thing we need to know is it is in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Whoops, that's not right. Los Angeles, California. All right. <clears throat> 15 high, flat. So it's, wo it's wondering what is the static horizontal and vertical wind pressure. And to get that, we do this. Use this equation right here. CE, CQ, QS, and I. And we'll go over real quick what these are. And first off, First off, we'll start off with this CE, and that equals, I believe, the exposure coefficient, what I would kind, or it's called combined height, exposure, and gust factor coefficient, but I always just call it exposure coefficient. And you're going to get this off a table, exposure coefficient. And this exposure coefficient, once again, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is the UBC way of doing things, not the IBC way of doing things. An IBC is more current. UBC kind of went away to dinosaur around 2000-ish. So exposure coefficient is also um, the combined height, exposure, and gust factor. But doing this UBC kind of gives you a good, good um understanding of what was done in the past and now you can see where we are now so it's it's worth going through this and I will do new videos on the IBC code as well in time all right it's table was that 16 G in the IB in the UBC there we go and in this case it says height above average level of adjoining ground and you can see 0 to 15 feet And then you can go over, and it says exposure D, exposure C, or exposure B. And you might be wondering, oh, which which one is it? And if you look on page 100 and, what is that, 25 of your study guide, if you have it, it says the site exposure is classified as exposure B, C, or D. Exposure B has terrain with buildings, forest, or surface irregularities, covering at least 20% of the ground level area extending one mile or more from the site. C is defined as having a terrain that is flat and generally open, extending one half mile. D represents the most severe exposure in areas with basic wind speed of 80 miles per hour or greater and has terrain that is flat and an unobstructed face and unobstructed face large bodies of water over a mile or more. And width. So I would say that D would be, you know, sitting on Lake Michigan or sitting on the coast. I'm going to go ahead and assume that this fire station is not sitting. I would say it's exposure B. It has terrain with buildings covering at least 20% of the ground level area existing one mile or more from the site. I think that's a safe assumption. But to tell you what, I'm going to go see see what they did in the study guide on page 128 what did they use they also would use exposure b for built-up areas which means you get a ce of 0 0.62 for exposure b so i'm saying exposure b i better hurry up i'm gonna run out of time exposure b so 
CE equals 0 0.62. All right, so we have CE. Now we need to go with CQ. And this is a pressure coefficient. And this is a coefficient for what side of the building, for instance. They will have one for the windward side. Right, let's actually make that in blue real quick. They'll have a different coefficient for the windward side, a different coefficient for the leeward side, which is over here. And since this is 15 uh, feet, all of this will be linear. This will be linear as opposed to if you look on page 126, it, once it gets over 15 feet, it starts getting bigger. It goes straight up to 15 feet. This is the UBC once again, and then from there, it kind of does the, this thing. So it gets more uh, larger the higher you get, because the higher you get, the more wind you're going to see. And then you also are going to get a uplift pressure on your roof. So this, this CQ is giving you a different coefficient for each for each side. You'll have a leeward coefficient, you'll have a roof coefficient, you'll have a windward coefficient. I said that backwards, but you get my point. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and move on. And in this case, let's just say we have windward, leeward. And windward is the side that the wind's coming from. Leeward's the opposite side, and the roof is obviously the roof. And you can go get all this on table table 16H. I'll say roof. Table 16H in the UBC. So as, as you can see, a lot of these um, windward calcs, you just need to go and you need to have the... Uh, the UBC, or you need to have the ASCE seven, um, because that will that will give you all this. There's nothing I can tell you to say, hey, just know this. You may be able to come up with some rules of thumb based on this and use that, but it's not going to be what you need to be doing. So, you really need to have those books. And and uh, so let's go ahead and move on. So, anyways, it says method one in the the, the table. Method has method one. It has walls, windward wall is 0 0.8 inward. So windward is 0 0.8 inward. And then leeward wall is 0 0.5 outward. Roofs, it says wind perpendicular to ridge, 0 0.7 outward. Leeward roof or flat roof, 0 0.7 outward. So more that. So those are our three coefficients. All right, now we need to find what is QS. What is the Q sub S? And I guess let's go over here. That should work. QS, and you can see that this is table. You get QS from table 16F in the UBC. And this is just the wind pressure, for lack of a better word. Wind stagnation pressure is what they're calling or direct wind pressure at a standard height of 33 feet. So we need to figure out in the table it asks for what's your basic wind speed. Well, we don't know that, but we do know that we're in Los Angeles, California. So we can go to the map in the UBC, which is also reproduced in the study guide on page 122. And you can see Los Angeles is right down there, and it looks like it's in the basic wind speed of 70 miles per hour. So QS equals... 70 mph. We can take this, oh, I'm sorry, when I did this, QS equals 70 mph. That's incorrect. I didn't mean to do that. What I meant to do was take that Q, let's just go ahead and get rid of that. That's going to be confusing. Take that 70 mph and put it into the, um, to the table. And you get 12.6 for QS. 12.6 and that's in PSF. All right, so you have 70 miles per hour, and you could put that 70 miles per hour into the Q equals 0 0.00256 V squared and put in that 70 for V, and it, it should work out. But we're not going to do that because that's what the table's for. All right, now we have QS. The last thing we have is I, importance factor. And as I said earlier, the importance factor 
is going to be a little bit higher in this because it is a fire station. And in this case, the fire station has an importance factor of 1.15. I equals 1.15. And this is on table. What, 16k, and that's reproduced on page 84 in the study guide if you have it. And that's in, also in UBC. Alright, so we have all of our information. Let's go ahead and solve. CE is 0 0.62. CQ is, oh shoot, okay, it's going to be either be 0 0.8, 0 0.5, or 0 0.7. All right, that's fine. We can make this work. And you'll see how I do this. I'm going to write 1, 2, and 3 on top and over here. That'll make sense. You'll see. And then QS equals 12.6 PSF. And then our importance factor is 1.15. All right, so we're going to go 0 equals equals equals. This is going to be wind word. This is going to be lee word. This is going to be roof Alright, so let's get the calculator out and let's go ahead and solve for what we want here. Reach it in my bag. Give me one second. And we have 0 0.62 times 0 0.8 first, times 12.6, times 1.15 equals 7. Point, let's call it 7.2. 7 7.2. And, let me think. And that's 7.2. Two is in pounds per square foot, because if you think about it, that's just, it's going to be a pressure. Pounds per square foot is what we're talking about. Our only unit we have is PSF, but sometimes these equations are kind of wacky, and they will give you, you p may put in PSF, but somehow with, through these coefficients, it changes it, and they don't show you the units. But in this case, that's not the case. We put in PSF. We don't have anything else to change that. We get PSF. So what I'm going to do is... Divide by 0 0.8 and multiply by 0 0.5. So I'm dividing by this 0 0.8, and I'm multiplying it. So I'm taking that out, and then I'm adding or divide, multiplying by that 0 0.5. So I'm taking that out and putting that in, in other words. Just uh, simple stuff, and I get 4.49, what we'll say 4.5. All right, and then we're going to divide by 0 0.5 and multiply by 0 0.7, and we get 6.3. 6.3. This is PSF. Didn't leave a lot of room. PSF and PSF. All right, and let's make sure those, I believe those are our answers, but let's go ahead and put them up here on this just to so, see where you are getting these. So our wind word, we're saying the wind is coming from this way. The wind word is 7.2 PSF on that wall. The lee word is 4.5 PSF. And your roof load is 6.3 PSF. And those are your answers. Let's just look at this question again, make sure we got the right thing. It was asking, what is the static horizontal and vertical wind pressure in pounds per square foot? And that's where we're giving them. All right. I hope that was helpful and not too confusing. I will see you in the next video.